What to do after the Epley maneuver? Is your patient cured? Hi, Peter Johns here, emergency physician with 37 years of experience and a passionate teacher about vertigo. I've been noticing that more ED docs are doing the Epley maneuver and helping their patients right in the ED, and I think that's great. But what do you do after the Epley maneuver? How do you know they're actually better? In this video, I'll briefly demonstrate the Dix-Hall Pike test and Epley maneuver using both model patients and real patient videos. Then I'll run through how you can assess the success of your Epley maneuver and what to do if they still have symptoms. Lastly, a few words about horizontal canal BPBV, which is a common variant of BPBV. When patients present with classic symptoms of BPBV and have the characteristic nystagmus during the dix hall pike test, my goal is to send these patients home symptom-free without any IVs or labs drawn or medications or imaging done. I was able to accomplish this in the patient with the red shirt we're about to see, all while videoing the whole thing with my phone. This shows how I like to do the dix hall pike test, in this case testing the left ear, sitting down at the end of the bed fully supporting the patient's head with my back fairly straight. Here on a model patient, I'm performing the dix hall pike test on the right ear. One, two, three, back to go, pretty quick. Can't keep your eyes open even if you get dizzy. And in this real patient's right ear dix hall pike test, she does not get dizzy and no nystagmus is seen. You getting dizzy at all? No. Here's a demonstration of the left dix hall pike test on a model patient. So on one, two, three, down we go. That's good. Good. Keep your eyes open. Oh. Okay, keep your eyes open. And on the real patient, after a short latency where she wasn't dizzy, she develops dizziness and vertical upward nystagmus with also a torsional component towards the left ear, which is best seen when she is looking towards the left ear. So she has left ear posterior canal BPBV. 30 seconds after her vertigo and nystagmus stops, I go directly into the Epley maneuver, holding each position for about a minute. The first position in the Epley maneuver is the positive dix hall pike side. Next position is a 90 degrees rotation to the negative dix hall pike side, and then after a minute, rotating a further 90 degrees or a bit more, and holding that for another minute, and then sit them up. Here with my model patient again, thanks Kaylee, start with the left positive dix hall pike side, rotate them to the negative dix hall pike side, and then another 90 degrees or a bit more, and then sit them up. We know that if done correctly, the Epley maneuver cures up to 80% of patients in just one maneuver. But how do you know if you've cured them? Just asking them if they feel better isn't a reliable way of knowing if they've actually been treated successfully. So here's what I suggest. Have the patient sit upright for about 15 minutes. This is to allow the autoconia to settle into the utricle and help prevent them from going back into the same or another semicircular canal. Go see another patient in the meantime. Then, repeat the dix hall pike test on the side that was positive in the first test. In this case, the left side. Getting dizzy at all? Doesn't look like it. No. How did my repeat test go on my patient? No nystagmus? No symptoms? Great! The patient is cured. You could discharge them home without any need for follow-up. Good job! If on the other hand, if the repeat dix hall pike test, the patient still has symptoms and nystagmus either the exact same or somewhat lesser intensity, you should go ahead and repeat the Epley maneuver. After waiting 15 minutes, retest them again with the dix hall pike test. And if they're still dizzy and have the same or lesser symptoms on the dix hall pike test, I would do a third Epley. And tell the patient to pay attention on what we're doing because you're going to do this at home twice a day until your symptoms of dizziness when rolling over or getting in or out of bed are gone. If the clinical presentation and dix hall pike tests are both having the characteristic symptoms and nystagmus of posterior canal BPBV, I would send them home after the third Epley maneuver. Now you might think that it would be a burden to do three Epley maneuvers, but as I said, 80% of the time it only takes one, sometimes two, and rarely three. And asking the patient to suffer for days or weeks while waiting for them to be treated by someone else is not very good care in my opinion. I remember one patient who was diagnosed with BPBV by a neurologist at an outpatient clinic and was sent home without an attempt to treat her posterior canal BPBV and was told she should just watch a video on YouTube and get better that way. Some days later, she showed up in the emergency department in the middle of the night after getting dizzy, walking to the bathroom and falling, and breaking both her wrists. These aren't her x-rays, but imagine what she suffered having both wrists and cast for months. Think about the logistics for bathing and toileting, doing just about anything. Besides ensuring that her wrists were properly treated, I cured her with the Epley Maneuver all in the same visit. 
A study just published written by a very vertigo knowledgeable physiotherapist by the name of Dean Metz showed that over a quarter of the patients referred to a falls clinic in the UK had BPBV. Referring your patient to a vestibular physiotherapist is a great option if you don't really think you can do the Epley maneuver or even just a follow-up to ensure patient resolution. Now another thing that can happen, again fairly rarely, is that on repeat Dixalpike testing after the Epley, rather than seeing the characteristic nystagmus of posterior canal BPBV, you might see something like this, horizontal nystagmus. In this case, the patient had a canal switch into the horizontal canal. This doesn't happen that often, but you should be aware of it so that you don't freak out if it does. This is when you should do the supine roll test to confirm the type of nystagmus is geotropic or apogeotropic, and then you could perform the Gafani maneuver on them to cure that variety of BPBV. In the man I just showed you, he obviously would have a left ear problem, because although the autoconia can switch from one canal to another, they can't move from one ear to the other. Here's a quick look at how you do the supine roll test. You roll their head 90 degrees to one side, and then you uh, look for nystagmus, and you roll their head the other way, look for nystagmus. And to do the Gafani for a left geotropic horizontal canal, you lie them on their good ear for two minutes, turn their head 45 degrees towards the ground for two minutes, then sit them up. There's some links on your screen on how to do the Dix Hall Pike and Epley maneuver and how to assess and cure horizontal canal BBBV. Thanks for watching.